realised last week we were talking about the Merseyside Night Hooks, or I should say, the Farnham Report mentioned the Merseyside Night Hooks. I don't know how we got that in. I didn't, I didn't do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, we, we talked about their, their opening of the season. They had a great game against Edinburgh. Um, repeated the Brit Bowl as well, of course, Gary. But they are doing it without a key part of their success last year. Well, Mark Houghton was uh, a stalwart in defence there. Uh, what a tackler. I mean, and the, I mean, you've got to give it to the guy. He's not a really big guy anyway, you know, of stature. I mean, James, you've said it in previous podcasts where, you know, about <laughs> players being a certain size and stuff like that. <laughs> Don't fit the mould. This yeah. guy, if you looked at him, wouldn't fit the mould. But he's been in the gym, he's worked out, he's learnt the game well. And it's paid off for him because I managed to catch up with Mark and have a little chat with him. And uh, this is it now. Mark Horton, middle linebacker, very sad night out. Uh, started around 2011, around February. Uh, been playing for about four years now. Started watching it when I was a bit younger, about 16, 17 years old. Started getting into it, understanding the game. Um, took a liking to it more than I did with rugby at the time. Um, and then it just went on from there and progressed. Of course, coming from a rugby town, St Helens, were you not swayed that way at all? What was I mean, impressed you more about American football? I don't know. It's the, the physicality and the, the, the tactical side of it. Um, I, I got, for me, rugby, I, I enjoyed playing at the time, but as I got more into American football, that kind of just went to the side. So how did you hear about the Nighthawks? Through Facebook. Um, I saw advertisements on Facebook, a um, few rookie tryouts were shown, I, I thought why not, give it a go. It's just something I, I got into, the, the whole physicality, the, the tactics, the, everything about it, I thought that's me, I thought I'd come down give it a go and then it just took off. Did you find it difficult? Very difficult. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, you watch it and it's like, it seems easier, but then once you come down and you get a play rock thrown at you, and it's like, well, it's just, you know, one little thing you, you can do wrong, and then that's the whole play messed up. What are your coaches like? <laughs> they're tough, but they're brilliant. Um, they put up a lot of the time, the free time, to, to help all the players. Um, a lot of thorough planning goes into each practice and I admire the, the fact that they give up so much time to help us all get better even though it's an amateur sport as well um, just just the work they put in shows off on the, the players. And do you think the fact that these coaches, have, a lot of them have got Great Britain experience, do you think that's shining through on the likes of yourself and the other players at Night Talks? Definitely. Um, with myself, um, Coach Craig Pennington, um, Everything I know I've learnt from him um, and he's obviously got great brain experience and if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be half the player I am at the minute. So out of all the positions in American football, and you know there's quite a few, um, why linebacker? I just like hitting people, simple as. So you like the, the physical and the Yeah, definitely, running? that's me all over, yeah. So um, what's been the highlight of your career so far, Mark? Easily winning the national championship last year. Definitely. Who would you say was the best team you played against? Um, it would be in my rookie year, um, probably East Kilbride. They were a well-drilled team, um, by far the best team. I don't like to say the worst team, but um, if I had to pick one, it would be Lincolnshire Bombers. <laughs> okay. And where do you see yourself in five years, Mark? Honestly, I don't know. Um, I'm taking it as it comes. Um, I just want to play at the highest level possible, um, get as much experience as I can and bring it back to the Night Hawks. So what's, what's next then for Mark Houghton? I believe you've got something in the pipeline? Yeah, uh, I'm going to play semi-professional football in Jacksonville. Um, looking forward to it, can't wait to get started. How did that come about? Um, just playing for the Night Hawks, they, they seen my film. Um, they were interested, they turned around and said, why not come down? We want you to play for us, so I thought, why not? So, if you have anything to say to somebody who's maybe interested in getting involved in playing American football, whether it be for the Night Hawks or any other team, what advice would you give them? Um, just 
come down, it's it's a brilliant sport. Um, you, you 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 fall more in love with it as you you progress. It's not easy. Um, it's a lot. It's hard work. It is. You've got to put the the effort in, in the gym to keep fit. You will get hurt if you don't condition yourself. Um, and it's it's just a brilliant sport to play. I'm trying out for Calgary CFL while I'm out there as well. <laughs> Mid April, I think. So if I can get, you know, the ball rolling well with them. To get spotted, or to get that opportunity to go abroad, you know, you're going to snap it off, aren't you? It, it's, it, I mean, Obviously. there's not many players, but saying that, 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 you know, there's a few guys in this country that have managed to make that little leap across to the water to play. I mean, Mel at Watson, he's gone up and played for the Raiders in the NFL. Yeah, but that's the Raiders. I mean. <laughs> hey, don't, don't be knocking <laughs> the Raiders. Don't take anyone. <laughs> We're talking about players giving, getting the opportunity to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Paper bag, please. <laughs> Mark's fortunate enough to have got hooked up with a team in Jacksonville. Um, I think it's the Apostles. Um, but, you know, it's... Well, we're wishing him the best of luck. I mean, if it works out for him, great. Obviously, Mark said he'll catch up with us soon and give us an update on what's going on there. And hopefully, he'll give us a little insight of what it's been like for a British guy to go over there and do that. And it's it's something I remember speaking to a guy from uh, the Black Blackpool Seagulls, one of the one of the uh, uh, the hockey rec leagues. I was about to say that's the worst American football team. <laughs> <laughs> Seagulls, go Seagulls! <laughs> <laughs> that maybe it's like free chip night. Everyone, just <laughs> <laughs> no chips like, on the ice. Throw <laughs> bears, throw, throw some fish. <laughs> This guy was talking about uh, the difference because he was Canadian and he said about the difference in standards between the Canadian leagues and the British leagues because obviously kids have been playing it over there in Canada and the US since they were this high. Well, they're brought up with it. They're brought up with it and and in some respects he thought some of the professional leagues over here looked peewee. Mm. That kind of talent level. Mm. <clears throat> it's an uphill battle surely for somebody like... Mark Alton, who's going over to America with a couple of years' experience in comparison to kids who've been playing it since they they could walk. I suppose the biggest barrier to a, a UK-based player is not you can have all the talents in the world, but you don't have access to that high-quality coaching that you need to bring on those skills and teach you teach you the fundamentals of the game. Well, I disagree with you a little bit there, James, because as much as I would have said that maybe two or three years ago. The game has actually improved in Britain, which is surprising. It's not like 1950s football, soccer, where they're all running around <laughs> chasing the ball. It's, uh, they're silly you know, nannies. <laughs> 22 people running around after the ball. It's They actually do work hard. The coaches do work hard. They, they're doing their own training. I mean, take the Night Oaks, for example. I mean, the, the coaching staff that they've got there is really, really impressive this year. Last year, they it proved that they've gone to a bowl and they've done what? This year, they're doing just as well by, of course, having that second repeat game against Edinburgh, where they, everybody was sort of like tipping it to be Edinburgh the favourite team in that, because it was in their home ground. But the Knighthold, even the Edinburgh's coaching staff, praised the Knighthold's coaching staff for what they did. But I see where James is going with yeah. this, because what he's saying is, you did have, up until maybe 10 years ago, you would had NFL Europe. So you had an option for NFL quality coaches. However good the coaches are, and I'm not disputing how good the coaches are, because rightly so, Merseyside Night Talks specifically are highlighted as a team that's got phenomenal coaching going on there at the moment. But um, you had a calibre of coaches coming over that were um, a source of knowledge and information that could be imparted to the British coaches that you're maybe not getting now. But I could, I could say, I could return serve on that though, because don't forget, you've got people like Tony Allen involved with the London Warriors, what a programme they've got going. Yeah. And Tony was heavily involved with the London Monarch setup. Uh, you've got lots of other people that are involved in all the NFL E setup that have all been that involved have all in benefited from the NFL Europe though. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what I'm saying so take, is, hang on, take, they've, they've spread that on, and because they have it, spread it on, but they've spread it on because there was an opportunity to use some of that NFL experience. <laughs> if you take NFL Europe out the picture and it never happened, does Tony Allen uh, get to that standard where he can impart such great skill onto other teams? Well, no, because what they do is 
that that op- door of opportunity opened for them. They went abroad, yeah. so they went to America, like uh, Marvin Allen and, and a few others. Um, um, Aiden Dead, who went over there as well. He, he's been involved with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, for example, that young lad that's just uh, that played the Warriors got that opportunity yeah, to walk on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, things like that are starting to move on. Little doors of opportunity are opening. The people who've been in that position at the right time, the right place, have, have taken it, grasped it, and then what they've done is they've actually fed that back into the system back here, and it's worked. Hello and welcome to the Farnham Report. Massive weekend for you this weekend. British American football, Premier Division North. You've got the Lancashire Wolverines local team travelling to the Yorkshire Rams. It's a big game because, of course, the Lancashire Wolverines had that amazing win over East Kilbride a few weeks back and they need to go on the road and make sure this is 2-0. For the Rams, it's really, really big as well because the Yorkshire Rams lost last week 63-2 to the East Kilbride Pirates and they can't afford to be taking defeats like that. Now... Personally, I think the Wolverines are going to go there. I think the Wolverines are strong, and I think they've got a really, really good chance of getting the win. They can't get complacent. They've got to make sure that they go there and do this in the best possible way. In the NFC Division 1, Merseyside Night Oaks are at home. They host a Shropshire Revolution at JMO Park in Skelmersdale. If you get a chance, go watch that. It's a 2 o'clock kickoff on Sunday. Uh, Shropshire hope to derail the Night Oaks season. They've, they're currently 0-2. They've not won a game yet, but... Last year's Division 1 champions are currently on a 15 game unbeaten run. They went 12, uh, they're 12 wins and 1 draw last year. They're off the two wins this year. It's a massive run for them, and they know that they're good enough to keep this run going. A win here for the Nighthawks really does firmly establish them as one of the best teams in the division. They'll be going up against Gateshead, who they uh, play in Week 12, and also Clyde Valley Blackhawks, who they host in Week 15. So if you get a chance Week 15 of the season, you need to book that off and get down there to that game. Same division, Chester Romans, who are currently 0-2. Dreadful start for them. I know they were hoping for better. Uh, they host the Edinburgh Wolves, who are 1-1. Of course, the Edinburgh Wolves, the same team that lost to the Merseyside Nighthawks recently. It's a big, big weekend for the, both teams, because both teams need a win here. Both teams need to establish themselves as a good team in this division and hope that results go their way so they can drag themselves back in. Uh, Chester have had an awful start, losing badly to Clyde Valley in Week 2 and then losing a close game to Nottingham Caesars a week later. And as I said, Edinburgh started off with a great win at home and then lost. They're currently on a five-game five away trip at the moment. That's going to be huge for them. Could really help out with the division. Uh, in Division 2 also, across the river there, the Halton Spartans are on the road. They're looking for their second win, and that would be their second ever win, because their first game they managed to pick up a win, which was great. Um, they won at Crew in Week 2. They could uh, look to really establish themselves in that division as well, as they travel up to the border to play against the Carlisle Sentinels, I believe they are, uh, who pulled up their first win last week as well. Now, uh, those NFL fans out there, of course, last weekend, huge weekend. It was all about the draft. It was all about the 256 players that were picked to go play pro football. Uh, it was a massive weekend. Uh, big talking points, of course, was there was a huge amount of anticipation about exactly who was going to go where and who was going to trade up. It turned out it was really boring. Nobody traded up. Uh, the first two picks, of course, were uh, Jameis Winston to Tampa Bay and uh, Marcus Mariota, as Roger Goodell apparently called him, to the Tennessee Titans. I think if you look at the draft, it was a huge win for some teams. Um, Tennessee Titans seemed to come out really, really big winners. Uh, they added Mariota and a red zone threat, Daryl Green Beckham. Don't quote me on the name. Those names are getting difficult by the day. But uh, they've got a great core of young, talented players. Whether it's this season this year, it might be too early, but they're certainly looking good. Um, the UK-bound Jacksonville Jaguars, over the last few years, they've been awful, which means they've had a lot of picks. But they seem to be turning those in. It's a third year for coach Gus Bradley, and I genuinely think that they're looking like a much stronger team this year. Certainly going to have a good chance. Uh, the losers, uh, really, the New Orleans State had five picks in the first 78, and, and they never drafted anybody that anybody seems to be talking about or nobody's raving about. So I guess we'll see how that goes. The Cleveland Browns, what is going on with that team? They seem to be just disappearing into mediocrity. Can't say much more about them. Uh, swinging through now onto the baseball. I don't know if any of you follow the baseball, but A-Rod this week hit his 660th home run. That is a huge feat. That is a massive feat. The problem is he's been linked with steroids. What can you say? Steroids, steroids, steroids. That's baseball. It's been that way for a long time. What can you... Uh, give the guys credit. A-Rod, I think you've done well. Farnham Report, out. Baffers now up and running. Seasons ago. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Uh, it's- proved to be quite an interesting formula this year. The Premier Division's obviously been shrunk down a lot uh, and, and 
It was what, quite unwieldy, really, wasn't it? It was. It was very, very split. There was a, a split there. So, obviously, they've dropped them down now into the now what they call the NFC 1 and SFC 1, which is where the Night Hawks are competing, of course. Uh, so, that's making that quite competitive now. But, uh, but now it's making the Premier quite close as well. The games they're now playing, instead of playing one game against everybody, they're playing each other head to head, you know, twice. And you've got, uh, obviously, in the South, it's quite strong. You've got the London Warriors, the London Blitz, the London O's. It's all, all your strong teams down there, like you expect. Um, and then, obviously, in the Northern Conference, you've got uh, East Kilbride, who you know, have always been there, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the top, you've got Tamworth, um, you've got um, Yorkshire, and Sheffield, and Lancashire. Lancashire, obviously, is quite a strong team. I, I, I fancy well, that. Well, hang on a minute. Well, Yorkshire are a good team as well, you know. No, 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 hang on a minute, mate. No, 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 yeah, they are. No, Lanc- Lancashire have walked all over Yorkshire, mate. No, 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 Yorkshire have beaten Lancashire. God knows well, how many How do you figure that? Right, when Lancashire beat Yorkshire... Each- hang on a minute. No, 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 no. no. We seem to be having a little disagreement here. <laughs> I think we've got a settler in the traditional fashion. <laughs> and a bit of premature speculation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way I know, sir. <laughs> Why, I accept you invitation sir and these t- teams are playing this weekend are they yeah I believe they are yeah, yeah. Well, so it's it's timely as well it's yeah. battle of the war of the roses war of the roses <laughs> Gary are you ready I think I am three two one Lancashire Wolverines Lancashire war of the roses red versus white now let's not get confused here with the uh, is it the 14 uh, Oh, hang on a minute. 1421 to 1487, the 66 year war between the, Lanc- <laughs> the Lancastrians and the Yorkists. No, we're not talking that. And we're not talking about Oliver and Barbara Rose. And <laughs> <laughs> in other words, Kathleen Turner and, Dan- and uh, Michael Douglas and Danny DeVito. None of that. We're talking about British American football Lancashire Wolverines who are going to walk all over the Yorkshire Rams. Yorkshire Rams last year finished 5 and 4. Right, and they only, they only won their final two of the three games, which was up against two teams, which were already cannon fodder at the bottom. Lancashire are a team on the rise. They've beaten the top team in the Northern Premier already. The only team in terms of put a big dent in them is Kilbride. They've got players like Dave Mead and QB. Not only can he pass... Oh. It's up. Oh. That was it. Oh. Amateur. <laughs> <laughs> he spent no. 45 <laughs> seconds making jokes about Yorkshire. <laughs> that film you didn't quite remember. <laughs> 1989 as well. Oh. Ben, it's, it's all to play for. Oh, it's on. <laughs> Are you ready, sir? I'm ready. Go. Well, this is war. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you now, sir, there are many good things to come out of Yorkshire. Tea bags. <laughs> Heart- <laughs> Heartbreak. The Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> The wolf pack, which is still a more scarier bunch than the wolverines. Oh, no. And also, the Yorkshire... The this is a failure. The, the Yorkshire Rams. The Yorkshire Rams, who have been established over 25 years. Did I tell you as well that they've gone unbeaten at home for the last two seasons? <laughs> Guess what? New, co- <laughs> new head coach Dave Paulson's coming this year. New lease of life, new playbook. He's bringing over 29 years' experience with him. I'm sorry, but when it comes to it, on paper, yeah, great, the Wolverines are no more than a house pet. Might have beaten the biggest team on the league, but nah, I don't care. At the end of the day, Yorks are going to stand there and take it firm, and they're going to raise the bar for the Wolverines. <laughs> I like oh. the I like the pun to end on. I like you managed to get your joke in. Yeah. Just for the clarification, um, this over 29 years of experience, is that 30 years? I'm not more for you. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> this new head coach that they got, Dave Pawson. Where did he come from? He came from... What oh. experience did he bring with him? He came from... Oh, oh, yeah, 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 you're just trying to... Do you know he played oh. football? Oh. Oh. He came from the Barnes and Bears? No, he never. He came from the Manchester Titans. <laughs> <laughs> A Lancashire <laughs> team. <laughs> According to the rules of shrivelly, you've had your lot of I'm time. not wearing a shrivelly. <laughs> of course, you can vote on this on our Twitter feed. The link should be appearing somewhere on the screen now. <laughs> Hashtag Ben, <laughs> hashtag Team Ben, hashtag Team Gary, because I can't have Team Lee because one of them is going to win. <laughs> like the original War of the Roses, 
families were split. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. See, that was a better joke than the two of you did all together. You both spent, but what I did like was that you both spent 45 seconds of your prem spec just trying to get jokes in and not actually giving any facts about your team whatsoever. You're lucky you didn't start producing photographs of Hilbert Ogden and stuff like that. I just hope the Wolverines and the Rams aren't watching it. <laughs> while we're on the subject, yeah. that game has got to be a game to watch. It's a game of the week for me. That um, is. Lancashire, as we've already pointed out, they're on form at the moment. Yeah. And they, they convincingly held East, Kil- East Kilbride in their in their own backyard. I must add, though, not in East Kilbride. They were in Lancashire, and it goes to show that they're doing something right. And we we picked up on it earlier in the show about the fact that teams are the coaching's are getting better and stuff like that. Players are, are doing more to be more competitive. Quite rightly, Lancashire have got something going. They've got a brilliant academy. They've got, they're probably one of the teams that have academy. First, I would say in this country, they do it at all different levels, and in, in not just youth and junior, they do it in colleges, and they've got the senior team as well, and it's you know, paying dividends for them. But um, no disrespect, Ben, but Yorkshire, I mean, you know, I expect they've been playing okay recently as well, but I kind of expect and them also to trip up in this one game. game. They, no, I, they also won their opening game against the Shropshire Revolution. Now, yeah, OK, great, take nothing away from Lancashire. It doesn't just mean that Lancashire or EKP are going to walk that conference. Look at it, you've got Shropshire in there. Uh, no, 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 Sheffield Predators, sorry. You've got those in there. You've got Yorkshire, you've got Lancashire, you've got EKP. I think there's... Coventry. Oh, no, it's not, uh, Tamworth. Tamworth Phoenix in there. That's a good, hardcore conference. That's going to be one to keep an eye on, certainly. But it goes back to what I was saying before. It's uh, the, the read structure has basically made it now, as opposed to playing everybody once, they're playing each other head to head twice. It's made it quite competitive, I think. And and this year, as much as there's a lot of moaning and groaning about, oh, not another restructure, not another real land, I kind of think this formula's gonna make people rethink because there's teams who've just gone in year in year out going, here we go, another season, and everybody's gone, oh, we're just playing for second and third here now. Yeah. Because it's like a foregone conclusion, but it's not. It's not the case anymore. There's teams out there that are actually going. Mm-hmm. At the end of a season, we finish second or we finish third. Not next year. We want to finish second. We want to finish first. 